Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm here with my beautiful wife, Michelle. You're so sweet. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us once again. We are recording this episode on Sunday, January 6th, 2019. I'm going to do it one more time. The last time I'm going to do this, I promise. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> We appreciate that you found us today. In the future, you can find us on 1057max.com under the Max Plus tab, as well as on the Max FM app. You can also find us, or better yet, even subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. And please, if you get a chance, we'd really appreciate one, you can tell a friend about us. Let us know, let them know that there's this Disney podcast that you enjoy listening to. Uh, try and get more people into our Hyperion Adventures family, but even an easier way to do that, well, I guess that's the easiest way, a secondary easy way to do that is to give us a rating on one of these sites that you ever you listen to us from or better yet if you have a little more time give us a review and we got a couple of great reviews this week that we really appreciate thank you for those of you who have reviewed this podcast it really helps people that don't know about us find out about this podcast yeah, we really do uh, appreciate you taking the time to, you know, let us know how we're doing, mm -hmm. some things that you really liked about the podcast, some things you'd think we should focus on more or change up, because we really want to make this, one, an interactive podcast, but one that also hits the needs of our of people who are listening. By the way, speaking on the term that we're, we're trying to get this podcast found by more people, if you're looking at your uh, your device today, you may notice we've extended our name a little bit. Uh, we're still the Hyperion Adventures Podcast, and that's why I'll still mostly call it, but we're also the Hyperion Adventures Podcast, everything Disney for every fan, just to try and get Disney in there. People know that we're a Disney podcast. I think most of you know that, obviously, by now, but it kind of a Hyperion's a little bit of an obscure name. Uh, we wanted to make sure and get it out there for more people to find us. Right. Absolutely. So if you're wondering why that is <laughs> popping up there now, that is the reason why. Uh, thank you for, Michelle just mentioned it, you know, you meant, you've been interactive with this show. We really appreciate it. And there's lots of ways if you want to continue to interact with us, you can do that on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook and Instagram at Hyperion Adventures Podcast, and you can always email us at Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is exactly right. <laughs> Michelle is always right, as she always is. Well, I, I think a lot of you have listened routinely have, have, know that I really do try to plug that you do reach out to us and, you know, give us your feedback. And, and we've really appreciated in the past, a lot of you have shared things that when we're doing certain topics, whether it's the top five. So we really have some great listeners and we appreciate you do connecting with us. Yes, so much so. We really appreciate uh, and we're going to have some lots of great stuff. Well, by the way, uh, this podcast, we are in the studio this week. Uh, the next two podcasts, we're going to be doing a little bit differently because we're actually taking a vacation for the first time since right. we started this Huzzah. podcast. <laughs> so we're going to be out the next couple of weeks. We're going to start this series that we're doing here, and we're going to continue it on for the next couple of weeks. But if you hear a little difference in the next couple episodes, there's a reason why, and we'll talk about it more at the end of the show, kind of give you a, a heads up on that. But just in case you don't hear, listen to this all the way, we'd like you to listen all the way to the end of the show. But if you haven't, just so you know, if it sounds a little different next week, you'll know why. Right. And so, you know, we'll, we're going to be keeping you up to date this week, but the next couple of weeks, um, we might not be as, as able to do that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to be a little out of town and a little yeah. bit. So basically, we're, record, we're recording a couple things today. We're going to release those. Because we aren't going to be in town, we're going to cut out in the coming up weeks the new the store, Disney stories of the weeks. But we will always wrap it up with a tip for you because we always have to do that. Exactly. And we will be live on Twitter and Facebook while we're out on vacation. Absolutely. So, so we'll be in touch with you all that way. And we will be releasing these podcasts just as we always do. You can look forward to them if you do look forward to them. You can look forward to them every Sunday coming and bothering you on your device so you know that we have a new episode out. So uh, let's get on to today's episode. We have lots of stuff for you today, including a couple new discounts were released for stays at the Walt Disney World Resort. A Disney landmark gets scheduled for a makeover and details keep flooding in about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. We'll tell you some brand new and exciting stuff that has come to light about this new 
very highly anticipated land. Oh, I can't wait. And every time we hear more, it's just like, oh, it just keeps wetting our appetite so more and much. more. Oh, we just get here already. <laughs> just get here already. We're on Galaxy's Edge to get here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, our main topic for this week and what will be coming up for the next couple weeks is we're going to go through a wedding series of what it's like to get married at various different Disney entities. We're going to call it Tying the Knot with Disney. And this week, we're going to start selfishly <laughs> with ourselves and what we did. No, we did not get married at Disney. We actually got married in another ceremony in a, a hotel nearby. Uh, we did kind of a Hawaiian theme. We right. actually had some Polynesian dancers for our reception and everything. It was a beautiful ceremony. However, we did do our vow renewal with Disney, and that was uh, really a great time. Right, right. We did our vow renewal on Disney Cruise Line, um, which we're going to talk about, but it the way that the Disney Cruise Line works, the vow renewal is the same way that they do if you're doing a wedding. So a lot of what we talk about mm -hmm. can be applicable to both types of uh, events. Yeah. So we're going to do us today because we're selfish and we like to, <laughs> it's all about us to begin with. And then in the coming weeks, as you're here like next week, we're going to talk to a wonderful guest who got married at the Walt Disney World Resort. And they're going to share uh, their experience on that. And then the following week after that, we're going to bring it back closer to home back to the Disneyland Resort, and we have a wonderful guest that's going to speak about their wedding at the Disneyland Resort and everything that goes in around. So you can kind of have an idea if, let, let's face it, it's the holidays, or we just got past the holidays, maybe someone you know, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's you, you got engaged. A lot of engagements happen during the holidays, or also Valentine's Day is very close. It's coming up soon. Maybe you're getting engaged or someone you know is getting engaged. And if you're thinking about uh, getting married at any of these Disney entities, the parks, the cruise ship, whatever, we're going to kind of bring it to light and so you can kind of have an idea going in and what you might expect. Right, exactly. So uh, we're hoping to, you know... It enlighten you with some broad perspectives and keep in mind too we're, we're the focus here we're putting on is weddings but uh disney at their different uh venues do provide other types of event planning and parties so this is you know hopefully giving you some other ideas as well yes uh, many things whatever you're whether it's an anniversary whether it's uh quinceanero whether it's a bar mitzvah you know whatever you might be ceremony you're looking to to do uh disney has a way to do it and uh they they do it very well exactly so, okay, back to us. <laughs> We're going to start off by telling you exactly, because I don't think we've touched on this really a lot. Um, we did a little bit at the beginning of our, this show, the very first episode, and many of you probably haven't even heard the first episode. Yeah. You've joined us somewhere along don't the need lines. To. <laughs> uh, but um, kind of want to let you know about how we met. Uh, it's a kind of a very interesting story. Right. We were both had just recently gotten out of not so great relationships in right. the past. Um, and so we were off single doing different things and uh, we found each other in a very different way. That's you right. Know. Well, we, we found each other online before online dating <laughs> really had really taken shape. <laughs> yeah. In an odd way. We were both on, we were on opposite coasts. We've told you this before that I was a California person going to the Disneyland Resort. Michelle was a Florida person going to the Walt Disney World Resort. Well, that's where we lived. She lived in Florida and right. Miami to be uh, actual on it. And I lived here in San Diego and, uh, you know, we were just going online doing things at night and I think Michelle was preparing for a Las Vegas trip. Right, with my sister and brother-in-law. Yeah. I was working at the radio station. Uh, I was actually running Padre games at the time and uh, you know had some time to kill so I would be on Yahoo of all places. Like I said, it wasn't a traditional <laughs> dating site. Right. Playing like free blackjack on there, just fit killing time in between innings or whatever. <laughs> and uh, Michelle and her sister kept popping up onto there, and we kind of struck a conversation off. Right. And well, I know we realized we had a lot of things in common, a lot of similar interests, and uh, you know, eventually it just grew more and more into an online friendship, and then eventually to where we met up and got to really know each other. And yes. That was an amazing experience. And eventually I persuaded her to move <laughs> 
to the West Coast, the best coast. Uh, <laughs> move, unfortunately, moving her away from the Walt Disney World Resort, but moving her closer to Walt's original dream, the Disneyland That's Resort. Right, and but... I got her to move out here with me, and I I hope you don't regret it at all. Not ever. at all. <laughs> it was a great move, and uh, I've done different moves in my life, and but this one by far was the best. It was the most extreme, I guess, but uh, definitely uh, been a, a, a wonderful experience. Mm-hmm. And couldn't have been, couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when, when I got her to move out here, basically it was, we had already, when we met, we knew right off the bat that we were in love with one yes. another, that we were wonderful, we were perfect for one another. And um, basically we decided, you know, we needed to go take this the step further. And that's when we became engaged right. and moved on to uh, the wedding that I was telling you about at the hotel locally uh, where we did a Hawaiian theme. But uh, we've got, moved along and uh you know it's funny because you know if it had happened now i think we would have no question done this somewhere disney right uh, we would have right. gone to whether it would have been walt disney world resort disney cruise line disneyland whatever we would have done something uh for this wedding to take place at disney but we moved on our disney love grew and grew and grew more we or maybe I, i've told about this at the christmas show michelle brought my disney love back out of me <laughs> Um, so we decided when it, by our 10 year anniversary mark, not exactly, but near our 10 year anniversary mark that we would renew our vows and we decided that we would do it aboard Disney Cruise Line. Right. And I think actually you ha- were the one that first thought of that idea and it was, you know, several years before and you, you, you know, you had just started any excuse to get on a Disney I cruise. Know. You had just said, you know what, when it comes time to our 10 year anniversary, I say we do it on the Disney Cruise Line and it's like, uh. Duh. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that Great totally idea. Makes sense. Great idea. Yes. So, um, and we're going to talk about it a little bit in the sense of, of how we did it. We did, we did it a little less traditional mm-hmm. than uh, what some folks do as a Disney cruise line vow renewal or a wedding. Um, so I want to first talk about if you were doing it through Disney Cruise Line and their traditional way, um, which sounds wonderful. And I, so we did it differently, and, and I'll give more details why we did that. But so they do have packages, and, and they have like a starting package that includes for up to eight guests plus the couple. And it has, you know, your, your ceremony coordinator to, you know, help you through everything. And then it includes, you know, the ceremony floor you know again everything starts as a basic in the basic package so the basic package you know for example for the floral it's you know for the for the bride uh, a bouquet and for the groom a boutonniere you know but again you can always add to these things and as well as add to the number of guests you bring obviously you know um they also have at the ceremony uh, a pianist who's playing mm. music. So it's, you know, somebody live there doing it. Um, you do get a wedding cake and a champagne toast celebration. Uh, the couple get to have uh, dinner at Palo included in that. And then um, you also get to have... A hundred dollars of stateroom credit that Ooh. you can use maybe for a couple's massage at the spa or you know some other type of adventures. Um, so that's where their basic package starts, and from there you can expand. So you can you know they really allow you flexibility, as I mentioned, with the number of guests or you know that you could have more florals, not just for your wedding party, but in terms of how much is decorated. You can have um, you know different levels of how your your cake is the, t- the type of cake and what's decorated on the cake and you know so it it does have a lot of flexibility going through there and i think one of the key things too as i mentioned first off is is having a ceremony coordinator or an event planner who helps you prior to uh when you're actually on board for the ceremony and then as it's as ceremony is actually happening so they do provide a lot of great support and a flexibility i believe you can also even get married on castaway key if you, if you right. so desire right. which is, would be spectacular and actually something i think we may renew our vows on castaway <laughs> no, key I know, right yeah so they have some uh venues that they typically use um although in you know some of the things i've researched since then and some things i've seen on social media uh, when I talk about flexibility, they can't always guarantee a site if you're asking for something at a different, uh, l- let's say, a different location, even on the ship, because they do have other onboard activities for the rest of the guests. Mm-hmm. So something might not time out to something that you might want. 
but it's always encouraged to ask them and you know they they will do their best to try to help make it a, a most memorable experience for you. I think this is going to be a theme throughout this series as we get to our next couple mm-hmm. interviews you hear whether it's uh, Walt Disney World Resort, the Disneyland Resort and we're talking about right now the Disney Cruise Line that asking questions telling them what you want and seeing if there is some sort of uh, wiggle room to make that happen. And a lot of times uh, they do at these Disney parks or at right. Disney Cruise Line find a way to accommodate you in some way, shape, or form. Exactly. And, you know, they really are set up to know that you want a Disney experience. Your expectations are going to be higher than they are out in maybe any other community type of setting or venue. And so they really do try their best to make magical moments for you mm-hmm. when you're doing this. And so I think that's the benefit. Like you said, we're going to hear that theme more, but same thing with the Disney cruise. You know, when I'm talking the package, it's, it's talking very small. And again, I want to emphasize that it can be bigger, but I guess the other flip side is it can be small. If mm-hmm. you, again, if you, ha- if you're, you know, if you want to keep it small, if you don't have a lot of people who want to go on a cruise from your friends and families or whatever, it's still a ceremony that you can have that can be something that is customized for yourself and something that you can really have as a spectacular memory. Right. They will work with you. And it also leads into something that we did and how we decided on ours. We didn't actually go with a custom package yeah. <laughs> uh, with them. We decided to use the money that we would have put towards a custom package and ceremony and use it in a different way that's right so what we did was we booked the royal suite what (laughs) i know we're so snobby we're so snooty (laughs) it is an amazing site if you ever go on disney cruise line look at their royal suites uh they sometimes call them the roy or the walt suite i should have said walt or roy um (laughs) i had royal in my head i guess um but anyways those are the the top tiers uh we we did this on the disney wonder which is i think we've talked about this even on on previous podcasts. One of the reasons are our favorite ship. Yes. Right, right. And I'm wearing my ah, Disney wearing Wonder t shirt. Yeah. yeah, there we go. We're all set for a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- that's an amazing location uh, just to be on the ship. I mean, it, it's over a thousand square feet, it has two bedrooms, it has a sitting room, a l- dining room, a living room. It's like three bathrooms. I think it's bigger than our house right yeah. now. We live in a condo. I think it's bigger than our condo yeah, right now. Big. It's pretty big. It's pretty big. And that's not even counting the balcony and things like that. So we knew we'd have a lot of space to actually hold an event. Um, and we also knew that through Disney concierge services, we could arrange for some things. So in the Disney suites, you can have food brought in. Not just from the restaurants. You, if for something like this, you can actually have um, a special menu, catering menu that you can select from. So, I mean, for us, this fit the bill where we wanted to put our money in terms of having an event and really customizing it. We weren't really trying to renew vows with necessarily an efficient mm-hmm. and things like that. So I think, again, this played into what we were looking for. We were looking for something that would... Uh, involve our friends and family and really highlight, you know, what we love, which, you know, our common love is with Disney. And so part of that started with our theme. Yeah, which was we decided our theme was going to be Pixar. That's right. Uh, We decided a Pixar theme. Uh, we just, by the way, our, the only people we invited were family, um, at least ahead of time was only family. <laughs> uh, we had just, uh, um, you know, my cousins and their children and my mother with us. And uh, we, this was a cruise from San Diego up to Vancouver. It was the five-day repositioning, getting ready for the Alaska season is when we did this. Uh, right. And we actually had the ceremony take place when we were docked in San Francisco the way it wasn't uh, so uh, <laughs> just in case that it was it could be a no, little wavy. It wasn't a little. Mo- we, we decided to do it when we were docked in San Francisco. But uh, yeah, we did a Pixar theme, and all we asked was that, hey, somebody, you know, if you're coming to this, uh, you know, wear something tied in with Pixar. Right, right. And so our, we have a great family, and they really did get involved in that, and you know, uh, had some wonderful. Uh, costumes or memorabilia on them that made it really, really special for us. And and part of the reason we picked the Pixar theme was, you know, when you think of Pixar movies, um, they really talk about relationships and dealing with struggles and overcoming them and how it makes your life better. And that's, 
really kind of summed up how we feel about our lives together that, you know, we've, we've experienced struggles, but we've, we've overcome things and, you know, it makes us better people because of that and, and just the rich relationship that we can have. Mm -hmm. So we went into this thing. um, We knew as many times, (laughs) we've talked about this before in the podcast is that we, we write up our own notes every week and sometimes they're different. Sometimes they kind of tie in with one another. Well, into this wedding, we also knew it was a Pixar theme going in, but we didn't know what each other was going to wear <laughs> as the, our outfits for our our vow renewal for the uh, the actual celebration itself. Right. Well, so when you think of Pixar movies, there are a lot of different movies, a lot of different types of characters and genres. And so... Uh, Tom's right. We didn't really have any discussion over what attire um, that either of us were going to wear for this. And so we went and we got our own stuff and, you know, we kind of kept it secret from one another. Uh, it, like we talked about with this cabin, we got it specifically one because it's, it's a great cabin to have family in and everything, you know, and we, that's just where we decided to put our money instead of, uh, you know, because that can be, the, it could be one, the great place to stay for the, the whole trip, a great way to uh, get things set up ahead of the trip and also a great place to hold the ceremonies. But we set off, it has different wings. Yes, it has wings onto it, <laughs> different beds rooms and uh, we both got dressed in different areas and we came out and what do you know we're wearing from the same something kind of tied into the same film right we're both wearing items from the movie brave so we both had our scottish on i had a kilt (laughs) that's right yes uh, and everything look great in a kilt honey michelle came out and did a scottish dance uh, (laughs) when she entered the we hit some music and she did a scottish dance when we came in we had the music from brave we had the the, music from brave uh, that was playing and it was timed out so that uh could come out um tom came out first and then i did my little my little dance and Mm -hmm. then we uh Moved on from there. That's right. I, I like to say that I was a real part of all this, and I was there. <laughs> but Michelle did all the, as you would expect, Michelle did all the planning for this, and she had some really fine points. There was some great stuff. Um, Pixar theme, we had some stuff from Up there that was really interesting. We had an adventure book. We had uh, the jar, you know, the you know where they'd be saving for their next, the, uh, yeah. the, the saving up for their next trip that they kept having a break because, you know, the, 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 they blew out a tire or, <laughs> you know, a tree hit the roof or whatever so heartbreaking at the beginning of the movie but we had the jar there for you know adventure and then she also had made up these signs that she had someone from our family hang up within the cabin that said something special about uh, the, the relationships right so um had uh posters made up um they weren't that expensive um and each poster had a blend of pictures from one of the Pixar movies, as well as some pictures important to Tom and I, whether it was our pictures or pictures of places we've been or just something memorable that associated us with those movies, and then a famous quote. And so um, what, what we had done was each member of the family had one of these and had the quote, but they didn't, it was rolled up still, so they didn't even see it. They just uh, read their quote and then opened it up. And so we had these banners all o- around the room while our, as part of our ceremony. Yeah, it was a beautiful moment and great to have our whole family join in. And we also had somebody else join in that we weren't expecting going into this, join in with us. But she was so sweet and wonderful and helped us out in so many ways that uh, we couldn't help but invite her to this. Exactly. So one of the things is doing this on our own, we didn't have the benefit of having their um, wedding or vow renewal planner so um which was fine you know but i can see you know i i want to emphasize that is a great thing to have oh yeah as you'll hear from some of our guests we have coming up because they all did these through wedding planner disney wedding planners exactly but what we did have benefit of was well even before the trip we had um access to the onshore concierge service and that's where we could find out what kind of things could we do uh, associated with the cabin, and that's where we found, you know, the catering menu, you know, and, and then some of the things that we couldn't do. So, for example, we didn't have access to the same type of cake you could have if you do the the traditional or official wedding or vow renewal. We had access to cakes that you could get through online 
pre-ordering. So, which was fine because we, you know, wanted a Mickey cake. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that that fit the bill for us for sure. You know, but we also then once on board, we had the services of the onboard concierge. And as Tom mentioned, there was one concierge uh, in particular. Her name was Joanne, and. We got to know her because we didn't do this on our first day of voyage. So we really got to know her and we had expressed to her what we were doing, just kind of keeping her in the loop of, you know, what was going on and that we were going to have, uh, she knew we were going to have a catered something because she'd seen the, that we had put in a catering menu, but she didn't know all the details. And as we started to explain to her and we really more and more got to know her that we just realized she was so much, uh, like a part of our family. And so we actually had invited her to participate in our vow renewal ceremony itself. So it was wonderful having her there. She's a very sweet person. Uh, She helped us out in so many ways. By the way, this was her first cruise as a concierge. Yes. <laughs> she wasn't supposed to be a concierge that day. Uh, she was supposed to be in training, but unfortunately, one of the other concierges had to rush off for a family emergency. So she ended up being kind of thrust into the fire, and she did spectacular. We had hired a photographer to be there for that day, which is one of the things you can do is you can hire a t- photographer right. for a certain amount of time to be there when, during the ceremony. And we brought one into our cabin to take, and she was helping guide him around, like, yo, take shots here, take right. shots here. It's something she'd have to do. She was our guest. We invited right her in but she was still on the job and doing a fantastic job yes and you know um and it was just funny how we had there was just a lot of similarities that we ended up finding out like for example i am from scottish descent and she was from scotland she is scottish she is scottish <laughs> and um my maiden name is young and her her mother's name was Young, and she always felt like, oh, I can't be a Young because I have my father's name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she always loved that as a last name. So just a lot of little similarities that, you know, we had connecting us. And her name is Joanne, and my long, well, not long, but just a couple years prior, my my dear aunt, Joanne, who we all loved very much and was a very integral part of our right. family, had just passed away. So it kind of felt like... You know, having another Joanne there kind of, I mean, well, obviously not even coming close to replacing right, it, just right. kind of, just, just having a Joanne there kind of felt good to, yes, to have her yes. along. So. And um, the other thing we were able to do, because we had family that couldn't make it uh, on the cruise, that we, we were actually able to stream it on Skype. So we actually had some some people watching that way. <laughs> some people watching. <laughs> I know that kind of your your uh, pe- your sister Helen people, and uh, uh, people brother in law Tom right right, he, right she right. even played the accordion for us to do a little dance That's for because right. she's an accordion player <laughs> uh, she does she so that was a little fun right right so um, another thing that that we were able to do because being in concierge some of you may not know this little secret but Paulo's has a separate room private room for. That can be reserved for parties of at least 10 to um, have dinner together. And unfortunately, we didn't have 10 on board. However, thanks to the wonderful people of Disney and concierge services, they were able to secure that room for us on that same evening as our vow renewal to, to be able to have our family in a private setting having Paolo's dinner together. Yeah, so of course not the kids. They they were off, uh, they went and did things with the, the Oceaneer Lab right. and the club. Uh, but uh, once we have got finished with our reception, with the hors d'oeuvres and various things that we had within the room, we all dressed up. Uh, well, some of, some of them stayed in there. I mean, props to my family members that yes. stayed within their costumes and went to Palo. <laughs> right. Because we love you for doing it. Well, we all got uh, went and went and had a wonderful meal in the private room at Palo that night, all the adults. It was really great, really special. It was really special. And so some of the uh, – another funny thing that happened um, – and we talk about how Tom and I have some of these synchronized things without ever pre-planning it, is so we had kept the original boxes that our wedding bands had come into. And so what we decided for this event of our vow renewals, rather than just bringing our rings back out again, is let's exchange Disney pins, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about Disney. And and Michelle loves pins. And I love pins. So, um, it you know, gave us another opportunity to buy pins. And so um, we we hadn't shared with each other, again, what genre for pin uh, 
or anything like that. And what happened was we each put our, our pin that we were going to exchange into one of these boxes. And just before we were going to get ready to do the ceremony, I realized I hadn't like labeled them. And I suddenly didn't know which one was mine that I was going to give to Tom and vice versa. So I brought Joanne into the room with me and I said, Joanne, let me tell you what my pin is, and that way you can tell me which box I'm to carry, and then she could look at both of them. And so I t- I'm going to cry. Ah. <laughs> I get all choked up. So I, I said to her, I said, okay, I did it from the movie Up, and I did the, um, the grape soda badge. The Ellie, the Ellie badge. Right, the Ellie badge. And so Joanne looked at both boxes, and I just heard her chuckle, and she handed me the one. She said, this one is yours. And so I, I, I took it, and um, so we actually had a, instead of a ring bearer, a pin bearer, and um, she carried out the boxes for us. And we, at that point, we had them designated. And lo and behold, when Tom went to give me his pin... It was an up. It wasn't the Ellie badge, right. but it was an up themed pin. It was a pin with them, and this is because we we had actually taken a uh, a, a photo shoot here in San Diego beforehand, and we just to have kind of have a few extra pictures to have around there. And one of them was Michelle did the the mailbox from up, you know, kind of where they both you know put the handprint on there and everything. And that was the pin I found. It was the two of them with the mailbox and with the handprint and it opened up and everything or that little lever for the mail being there went up and stuff. And so that's what I had chosen and Michelle had chosen for me the Ellie badge right. the pin, which I still love. And I'm actually wearing Ellie badge socks nice. right now in honor of that. <laughs> By the way, I'm totally digressing here, but you know, uh, changing the subject, but the 12 days of Disney socks that came out this Christmas. I got those as a present from Michelle's mom. Oh my goodness, those are the greatest. If you like quirky Disney socks, <laughs> next year if that comes out, get it. It's great. The yeah. great socks. All the socks are great. I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, no moving on back to what we we're talking about. Um, right, but that was just so, another quirky moment right, where we're another thing in common. Yeah, we both picked the same movie genre for our our pin exchange. So that that was really pretty funny that that happened. So I mean. Like I said, um, we didn't have some of the services or, um, you know, the experience of working with a wedding planner or event planner from Disney. And I think that was something that I think a lot of people, um, and we'll hear about more, that people really do appreciate from having that. And I know not everybody can book a royal suite. It's, they're mm-hmm. not. There's only two on the smaller ships. Well, I guess there's only two on all the ships, but they're different concerts. There are some two-bedroom suites and some other things, but not royal suites. And so, um, you know, that we were very lucky to have that experience. So, um, but... The other, the flip side too, is that you know, having your own large cabin like that, you do have some some flexibility and having space and having you know the type of ceremony where you take as much time as you want because there's nobody saying, okay, you got to move out of this location. And, right. You know. Exactly. <laughs> and that's basically what we're trying to say here is that yes, we didn't do it the the Disney way. We did it our own way, but Disney still was able to work with us and right. provide us with things. And yes, we did spend our money in a different way on a wonderful room for the the cruise uh but you know and that was a lot of money yes <laughs> but that's you know what we decided to do and how we approached it and it's something the, for you to consider if you're thinking about uh, going aboard disney cruise line what's important to you you know as far as the venue and and so forth um disney does things very well and there are people that will handle it themselves but if you're more of a hands-on person want to do it yourself but you're looking for kind of a better room or whatever maybe this might be an option for you and uh, obviously we didn't need an officiant there because we were just renewing our vows to one another and right it's not legal something like that but you can of course still do that whether it's you know obviously doing it through disney and having someone with them handling it or there's ways for you to become a registered officiant online one of your friends or family or right. whatever who's on the cruise who you, you would like to be your officiant and you can do it somewhere something similar to the way we do or do it completely different and do it somewhere on the deck you know and just you know don't right. don't tell anybody about it <laughs> just do it you know yes. <laughs> 
I think it'd be kind of fascinating for someone to do that and to tell us about it if you've done anything like that. Right, exactly. So, you know, and you can, you know, like as we did, we arranged to have a photographer from the, the Disney Photoshop come and be with us. Um, you can, you you secure them for whatever amount of time that you want them there. And so that can also be arranged whether you're doing it through uh, their their uh, fairy tale weddings or directly yourself you know so um and there was more that we could have done that we didn't you know like we didn't create a photo album we did get a a photo disc as well as the pictures from the photographer and you know so there are things that we did this was before you could do a lot of stuff on online right more the digital stuff i mean so we had to kind of either buy the pictures themselves or buy the uh disc at that time but i think there's they have even more uh options options for you now right right you know and um if, but the other thing to keep in mind, if you do want a Disney character to be at your ceremony or your event, that you cannot do in any cabin, even if it's the royal suite, um, you know, with Walt, called the Walt suite. You, you just, they do not ha- allow characters to go to a cabin. But if you're doing your event through Fairy Tale Weddings by Disney, then you can have. Uh, secure a character to come if you want. That's an, obviously an upcharge. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind, too, you're on the Disney cruise. There are a lot of uh, f- photo ops with characters. So that's another thing. If you want to in- interact with a character on your special day, but you don't have uh, desire to spend the money on that, there are still ways to get pictures with the character. Right. And you can also hire a photographer anytime. If you want to do some sort of shoots outside of this, that there are ways to hire a photographer to get you for certain, a uh, certain amount of hours, certain amount of fic- uh, photo opportunities right. out there. So you can take some of these pictures and then still have the ceremony differently. If you want, you can still be in your wedding uh, clothes if you right. want when you're yeah. taking these to, to do these wedding photos elsewhere it's just a way of what you know you just need to talk with disney talk about the people that are on board the ship and that are handling all this and just see what you can do and ask questions and they're always happy to help you right so i mean it, it was super magical for us we loved it we you know like i said we had some of the little extra perks especially with you know having the opportunity even though we had you know some hors d'oeuvres and and champagne in our room to actually that evening have our, our all the adults in our party to join us um, at Palos and have that special room. That was super magical. Um, so it, it, it worked for us. It was great. Uh, on, on the other side, too, I totally would recommend the benefit of going through with their wedding planner, if, especially if you want some help in, in knowing how to get what to think about and how to get things ready. I mean, the concierge people uh, who worked with us because we were in concierge room were wonderful, but that wasn't their forte. They, mm-hmm. th- you know, they were able to answer questions, and once we've made decisions on things, help make that happen, but they, they weren't there to guide us, mm-hmm. in other words, whereas if you do the, you know, their traditional package, that person will really hold your hand and make sure all your decisions and and everything that you want to do are are you know, really come to fruition. And so, you know, again, since it was our vow renewal and not our wedding, we weren't as, as, um, I guess, structured, I should say. Right. It's all what your focus is. Obviously, Mm -hmm. if you want it to be out of your hands for the most part, you know, uh, let them handle it. Yes, you want the stuff that you want in this, but you want uh, these people to take control of it so you can just enjoy your day and not have any extra concerns aboard the ship. Then, you know, you may want to go in that direction. We wanted to do it more our way, you know, and especially, you know, obviously, if this is your first wedding, if it's, you know, you, uh, it's a different reaction for you than for not only was not this our, it was, this was our, we've already been married for one thing. It was our right. second wedding for each of us. Right. And then this wasn't even that. This was our vow renewal. So it was just even more of a different thing. You know, we just wanted to have a good time with family and friends more in a nice place more than right. anything else. We probably would have made the Disney folks a little nervous the way we did it because what we did was we had it set up that everybody there had a part in saying something or doing something. And other than the kids, nobody else knew the other person's part. So nobody knew going in what was going to happen. 
they just knew they had like uh, either a speech or a quote that they they knew they were going to say, but they really didn't know how it was all going to play out and interact. And so I think with Disney, they, you know, because they, and I could be wrong, you know, but because they like things structured and to make sure it goes well, that there's rehearsals, there were no rehearsals. This was once we're doing it. And I, you know, actually, I think I was the only one that really was privy to know all the components of I didn't know anything what was going to happen she just told me where to be what to do and I'm (laughs) like okay I'll do that whatever (laughs) I said okay this song is going to be playing and you're going to enter the room at this note (laughs) that was exactly right exactly right and then make sure this song plays and this is she couldn't tell me the reason but this has to play at this point right right and so you know and like I said all you know the adults each had, um, we gave them some flexibility to, to customize a little bit, but just kind of each gave them a little synopsis of something we wanted them to talk about. The kids, we had a little piece into whether they were doing, you know, an explanation or an introduction. So everybody had something to say and had a role in the in our vow renewal. And so, it, you know, it was fun planning that. And it was fun seeing it roll out, especially for the fact that nobody knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So it was a really nice ceremony and, uh, you know, couldn't have asked for a better venue for it to happen in. And we just had a great time. And, right. uh, of course, I renewed my vows with the special person in my life who I love Aww. so much. So You're dear so to me. sweet. Likewise, yeah. baby. So. And, and we we're, had we're, our... our post honeymoon again on while well, we were still on the ship. Yeah, that's right. We still had a couple of days aboard the ship and then we pulled into Vancouver and then um, our family went uh, different directions, did their own thing. We went and did our own thing, went to Victoria, had a few days there and then to Seattle and uh, really, really had a nice trip and a yep. nice honeymoon afterwards, and uh, you know, all thanks to Disney Cruise Line. That's and, right. And your planning, of course. Huh? No, thanks. So. It was it was it was fun, and couldn't recommend it more as a as a consideration is having a Disney Cruise Line either wedding or vow renewal. Right. And so if, if this is what we did, this is what we liked. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this isn't right for everybody. This was just what was perfect for us. And we wanted to let you into our world and let you know, find out a little bit more about us. I mean, I know you listen, hopefully you listen weekly and you've kind of found out some more about who we are and we know we're totally sappy. And so, <laughs> of course, uh, the sap is going to come yes. out fully when we're talking about our vow renewal. But, um, but we kind of wanted to let you in on that. But also we wanted to let you know what we've experienced and that if you have any questions that we can help answer about uh, Disney Cruise Line and their weddings, we'd be happy to and what we did. And, um, you know, in any ways, maybe we could give some suggestions to you. We help you to do that. More importantly, contact Disney. Talk to them. Um, they're happy to answer your questions and uh, guide you on your path to any of these weddings, whether it's uh, Disney Cruise Line we're talking about here next week when we're talking about the Walt Disney World Resort or the following week after that, the Disney land resort right like you said the, the main thing is to ask questions you know and and they really do want to make your your special moment happy for you and so they will go that extra mile and you know you may pose to them a question of something that hasn't been done in the past and you know they're they're willing to at least give some consideration for those things so do not be afraid. Mm-hmm. Be no, brave. And, yeah, be brave. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. That wraps that up perfectly. Uh, I love that. Uh, and by the way, I just realized I didn't play my open going into the segment, so I might as well play it to close out our Tying the Knot with Disney segment. <laughs> This is the story of the day my life ended. Eugene. I'm kidding. It was the happiest day of my life. Our wedding day. The biggest shindig to hit the kingdom in forever. It was a magical day, and everything went just as we planned. Well. I pronounce this couple husband and wife. As long as we both shall live, no matter what happens. Hey, come on. We're superheroes. What could happen? Oh, 
pronounce your frog and wife. You do it, Hopalong. Be your lovely bride from sugar. So, who wants a piece of cake? <laughs> And that is the open that I was supposed to play earlier, but nothing goes as planned on this show. (laughs) So uh, it ends up being the close of our Tying the Knot with Disney segment. Again, uh, I hope you don't mind uh, taking that glimpse into our lives. And uh, if there's any way we can ever help you in the future with planning your Disney wedding, uh, we would love to uh, answer any questions you might have. Sure thing. Yes, please do. And if you have stories out there of your weddings, whether they were actually with a Disney venue or just a Disney theme, and Disney themes can mean anything now, right? Whether it be actual Disney and princesses or if we're talking Pixar or Marvel, Star Wars, let us know. Pirates of the Caribbean. The Pirates of the Caribbean, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> let us know what your, your your experience, whether it was a wedding or other type of party event. Yeah, was it like uh, a uh, Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. wedding? Uh, was it a Haunted Mansion wedding? What, what was it? Uh, we'd love to hear from you if you have any stories to tell and maybe we'll share them. Obviously, I've told you earlier we're going on vacation for a couple of weeks but when we get back we would be happy to share those with everybody out there giving you full credit and letting them know what wonderful a day you had as well so that's it for our first episode of tying the knot with disney we'll be back with a couple more episodes in the upcoming weeks but we were going to be away from this for a couple of weeks, but so we got to hit the Disney stories of the week. That way we can have a few of those before we go away on vacation. And I'm going to start with a couple new discounts that were announced for stays at the Walt Disney World Resort this week. Uh, really good discounts that we actually took advantage of yeah. for a trip that we have coming up in uh, June. Uh, this is straight from WDW News Today, our colleagues there, although you could also find this right on the Disney uh, Walt Disney World website. Uh, Walt Disney World on Wednesday announced the, quote, sun and fun room offer, end quote, which features up to 30% off rooms at select resort hotels for most nights between April 28th and September 30th. So here's the breakdown for the discount. At the Deluxe Villas, it's up to 30% off at Jambo House and Kadani Village at the Animal Kingdom Villas. Disney Boardwalk Villas, the Old Key West Resort and Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. And those are all, of course, like I said before, from uh, April, or excuse me, it says here May 28th to September 30th for those ones. I'm not sure if that was a typo in the story. So you may want to check on the website right. to be sure on uh, that. Um, Oh, excuse me. It's 30% from May 28th to September 30th. It's 25% off from uh, April 28th to May 27th. I now see that here in the story. Uh, 25% off at Disney's Beach Club Villas from uh, May 28th through September 30th. 15% off from April 28th through May 27th. 15% off Boulder Ridge Villas at the Wilderness Lodge. Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary Resort and Copper Creek Villas at the Wilderness Lodge and Disney's Polynesian Villas and Bungalows for the duration of the offer. For Deluxe Resorts, it's up to 30% off at the Animal Kingdom Lodge, Boardwalk Inn, the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, and Yacht Club Resort from May 28th through September 30th and up to 25% off the same resorts from April 28th through May 27th. 25% off at the Beach Club Resort for the duration of the offer and 15% off the Contemporary Resort, Polynesian Village Resort, and the Wilderness Lodge for the duration of the offer. At Moderate Resorts, it's 25% off the cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort, which is the ones we took advantage of, by the way. Uh, The Caribbean Beach Resort in Coronado Springs for the duration of the offer. offer, And 10% off at Port Orleans Resort, French Quarter, and Riverside. For the Value Resorts, it's 20% off All-Star Movies, All-Star Music, All-Star Sports, Art of Animation, and Pop Century from May 28th through September 30th, or 15% off uh, from April 28th through May 27th. And at the campsites, if you want to go camping or have an RV at the campsites at Fort Wilderness, uh, 20% off most stays from Sunday through Thursday between August 4th and September 12th. All stays must be booked by March 24th in order to qualify for this offer. So great re- discounts there on resort rooms. 
Uh, yes, and pass holders save even more, by the way, on that. Right. 40% off of rooms at select Disney resorts. Right. I know we saved a bit more on yeah. ours because we are pass holders for Walt Disney World Resort. And the pass holder one is a shorter duration. It's uh-huh. the April to June 30th. Good to know. Or April 28th through June Good 30th. to know. Uh, they also released another discount. Uh, free Disney dining is back, and this time it's going to be over the summer. Uh, is returning to the Walt Disney World Resort. And again, this is from WDW News Today. Of course, you can still also find this uh, on the Walt Disney World uh, website. Uh, guest booking vacations between July 5th through September 30th, 2019 are eligible for the offer when purchasing a non-discounted, so you can't tie these two things in together. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, five-night, six-day vacation package that includes a room at a select Walt Disney World Resort hotel and tickets with a park hopper or a park hopper plus option. The offer will be available to book through February 10th, 2019 for arrival most nights during the period while the offer for supplies last. Uh, here are the resorts that are eligible for what free and what free dining plan they are eligible for because there's different dining plans available depending on what mm-hmm. resort you book. Uh, the deluxe uh, Disney Deluxe Villa Resorts uh, hotels, uh, they have the regular Disney dining plan, the full deal, not the deluxe, the regular Disney dining plan. Uh, that's at Bay Lake Towers at Disney's Contemporary Resort, Boulder Ridge Villas at Disney Wilderness Lodge, Copper Creek Villas and Cabins at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, Disney's Animal Kingdom Village J- Villas Jambo House and Kidani Village, uh, Disney's Beach Club Villas, Disney's Boardwalk Villas, Disney's Old Key West Resort, Disney's Polynesian uh, Villas and Bungalows, and Disney's Saratoga Sor- I knew I was going to get tied up yeah. in this one. I've got so many to go through. Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. Uh, like I said, uh, those all get the Disney Dining Plan package, the regular one, as do uh, select Disney Deluxe Resort hotels, including Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, Disney's Beach Club Resort, Disney's Boardwalk Inn, Disney's Contemporary Resort. I'm just going to stop saying Disney because they're all yeah. Disney. Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, Polynesian Village Resort, uh, Wilderness Lodge, and Yacht Club Resorts. For the moderate resorts, for select ones, you get the quick service dining plan, which is a little bit different. We can go over this in just a second, what the difference is between the two plans. Uh, those are at uh, the Caribbean Beach Resort, Caribbean Beach Resort, uh, the Coronado Springs Resort, and Port Orleans Resort Riverside. And at the Value Resort Hotels, also the quick service dining plan at All Star Music, All Star Sports, Art of Animation Resort, but that's only for family suites there. Mm. And for the Pop Century Resort. So the difference between the two Disney dining plans is that what happens is for the, the when you get the when you purchase the Disney, you can either purchase it or you can do this free offer. For a regular Disney dining plan, you get a one sit down meal per day per guest that has the plan, mm-hmm. one quick service meal per day per guest who has the plan, and then you get two snacks, and those could be like popcorn. Uh, you know, soda, or it's, you know, it can be a uh, Mickey bar, Mickey bar uh, things like that are considered snacks. Uh, and there's also beverages included in there, a beverage for mm-hmm. each meal, not the snacks uh, for each of the meal. There's a beverage and that includes alcoholic beverages, by the way, for anyone 21 and older. Um, if for the quick service, it's two quick service meals and two snacks per person per day. You get those for the extent of your trip. You can use them all up on the first day if you want. You can stretch them out. You don't need to use the dining plan. Like if you want to go to a really nice restaurant and don't want to use your dining plan, you don't have to. You can, but you do want to, if you're going to pay for this thing or have it for free, for free, you're still paying in a way, uh, you can use them up as you see fit. You can go to two uh, sit-down dinners in one day. There's also ways that uh, you can use up two of them for some of the higher level uh, dinner plans. It's all laid out on the website. It, there's a lot of details to it, but so look it up, find out if it's right for you. And I, it's just, Figure out if which plan might be right for you if you're planning on booking this summer. I kind of did a little breakdown of what I was looking at for if you're trying to do this thing. So I went through uh, the various different resort uh, levels and kind of gave you a breakdown of what you're looking at. I did this for a five-night midweek stay in August from Sunday uh, August 11th through Friday, August 16th, kind of a typical summer stay. Okay. I did this for a family of four, two adults and two children, your ages eight and 10. And here's how it broke down. I, for the Disney Value Resort, I did the Disney's Pop Century Resort, a standard room. These are all going to be standard rooms or standard views. Uh, for the sun and fun room only, just for the room, no tickets, 
Uh, no, that this is just right. the package, just for the room. It's six hundred forty-eight dollars. It was at the time. I don't know what it is now. This is what it was at the time that I looked at it earlier this week. Uh, if you wanted to do the sun, I also you can do the sun in the fun with. Uh, tickets just for a single park, but to compare them with the dining plan, since you have to do park hoppers, I did park hoppers just to give you a good comparison. Uh, the Sun and the Fun with five-day park hopper tickets, uh, it was $2,669.12 for that family of four. That, of course, is an increase of $2,021.12 over just the room itself. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of figure it out for the tickets-wise. Now, if you wanted to do, instead of the Sun and Fun, you wanted to do the Delicious Freeze, which is what they're calling the uh, dining plan. This is the Quick Service Dining Menu uh, Plan. It is $2,831.12, which is only $162 more than doing the Sun and Fun. When you take the food into the equation, that is probably a pretty darn good deal. You may want to do the free uh, dining plan in that regard. If you know, and you still can, you don't need to only eat that way. You can still go to a regular uh, sit down restaurant and and eat there. You just don't use your dining plan towards that. Now, for a Disney's moderate resort, again, uh, still sticking with this is a quick service uh, dining plan. I picked the Disney's Port Orleans Resort Riverside with a standard room. Uh, The Sun and Fun room only was $1,280.86. If you went for the Sun and Fun with a five-day park hopper, it was $3,301.96. Again, this is about the same for each one because the ticket prices don't change much. Right. $2,021.10 difference for the tickets there. The Delicious Free Plan, if you wanted to do that, it was $3,489.26. That's a difference of $187.30. Again, pretty good right. deal. You know, I mean, think about the food, food you're going to buy. Right. It's going to be way more than $187 mm-hmm. worth of food for right. a family of four. four. Yes. Not a bad deal. No. Now we move to the Disney Deluxe Resorts, okay? Uh, this one I did, the Disney's Yacht Club Resort, standard view. Sun and Fun room only. It's $1,764.05. Uh, Sun and Fun with a five-day park hopper ticket. It's $3,785.12. Again, $2,021.07. And if you wanted to do the free dining package, uh, it was $4,541.12. That's a difference of $756. Mm. So it's a big jump up because now you're going to the full Disney dining plan. You have to weigh that out. And what's the difference there? You're getting a better room or or at least a better resort anyway. Um, Right. Will you probably spend for a family of four over five days there? Will you probably spend seven hundred fifty dollars on food? Well, if you do the sit down each yes. day, if you're out planning that, that could still you're work probably out going a, to do that, right? You're you're going to do well with that. I don't I don't know if it's as much of a home run deal as right, the other part, right? Exactly. But it is. I still do believe that that's a pretty good deal. Yes. You may want to look into that, do the math on it, and decide for yourself. Now, the Disney Deluxe Villa Resorts. I did the Disney's Animal Kingdom Villas Kidani Village, a deluxe studio standard view. Yes, you can. If you're not Disney Vacation Club, you still can get some of these studios and right. pay for them. Uh, so here's for the sun and fun room only. It was fourteen hundred ninety four dollars and fifty cents, which is a steal for yes. a for a, one of those studios for a family of four. Yeah. That is a great price. Uh, if you wanted to do the with the the sun and fun with five day park hopper, that's three thousand seven hundred two dollars and forty six cents. For some reason, I don't know why the price jumped up for this one, but it's. $2,207.96 was the only one that was different. I don't know if I plugged it in wrong or whatever, but that's what it came up for right. me. So a little bit more pricey on the tickets there. Uh, if you're going to do the dining plan, it's $4,423 even, which is a difference of $720.54. Again, that's actually a better deal than what we saw from the Yacht Club Resort. Right. But, you know, it still is something you have to weigh sure. in on. And again, you know, looking at just the sun and fun room, and if you only wanted to do, because you can do just, you know, one park a day right. tickets, that might be a, even a better deal than all those. So it's something to look at. Look at for yourself. Um, there's some great offers out there. Check them out. Um, we'd be happy to have, answer any questions, but even more so, Disney will be happy to answer any questions you might have on them. Right, right. So it's it's great that they are having this time that if if you've had something planned, you can make the modification without any problem. Or if you do have a problem, you can always rebook a new one and mm-hmm. cancel. But um, yeah, you can take advantage of these even if you've already had some plans. And if you haven't planned to go this summer, this might be something that uh, sparks your interest. Yeah, uh, great offers. And uh, these, like I said, these go till September 30th, which tells me that uh, 
Star Wars Galaxy Edge will definitely not be open till after <laughs> September 30th. Right. Not that we expected much differently, but uh, you could tell. And uh, also interesting, uh, I think uh, uh, OG Hyperion Adventurer Rob uh, pointed this out to me, uh, is that uh, apparently that they're not expecting the crowds to be big over this summer. Maybe a lot of people are holding out, like, well, I'm not going to book now because Galaxy's Edge is opening up. I'm going to wait till then. So they're trying to do as much as they can to try and bring a few more people in True. before that. Right. It's, not, it's rare that they offer these uh, the free dining, the free uh, dining plan uh, before the fall. A lot of times it's later in the year, not usually during the summer when it's usually pretty busy. Right. So they probably are expecting more guests to be coming in the fall considering uh, Galaxy's Edge is opening there. And they may also be expecting people across the country vacationing might say, oh, Galaxy's Edge is opening in the summer at Disneyland, so maybe that's where our family needs to mm-hmm. go for vacation this year. That could be. We'll find out for sure ourselves, and I'll be talking more about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in a moment. But before I get to that, I want to talk about something else that's happening at the Disneyland Resort, and that is that Sleeping Beauty Castle is scheduled for refurbishment beginning soon, actually probably by the time you're listening to this podcast. Uh, This again from our friends and colleagues at WDW News Today. A recent permit issued by the city of Anaheim shows that Disney is looking to re-roof the castle, replacing the material with fiber reinforced plastic on the turrets. The permit issued on December 27th is valid for one year. The refurbishment of the castle exterior is scheduled to begin on Monday January 7th and last until possibly as late as spring 2019. Internal refurbishments will take place as well. The Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough attraction will be closed starting Thursday, January 17th, where refurbishment will also last until spring. Apparently, a diamond celebration decorations that were on the castle from May 2015 through fall 2016 damaged some of the roof of the castle. Right. So they figured this is a good time before the crowds come in and right. see the castle. Let's you know take this on and, and uh, do some work work on it and get it back to where we want it to right. be. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, make it all up to snuff. Or- yeah. So if you're going to be heading out to the Disneyland Resort, expect that uh, starting uh, tomorrow and very soon afterwards, uh, If you're depending on when you're listening, we're recording this on January 6th, uh, they're going to be putting up some of the facade up there. You know how they always do a pretty good job of trying to hide it. Like you can't <laughs> tell that they're doing all this work on it, you know, but uh, if you're concerned about the, the you know getting your picture in front of the castle yeah, i'm sorry I, you, you may not have the best view of the castle for the next few months well maybe in a picture it might uh you may not know might not look too too maybe different you won't know <laughs> maybe you won't know so i'm uh, moving on now we'll get to the star wars galaxy's edge news and yeah. i'm hoping many of you saw this uh, out there this was from a story from barons actually which had some really interesting details about star wars galaxy's edge which is coming they actually visited uh the disneyland park very recently and received a tour and some insight in what's happening on this uh, highly anticipated new land. Uh, they got some good stuff here. They, they, here's what they found. I'm going to go through much of this story because it was really interesting stuff. Uh, this is something that we probably already knew, but just to explain it out there in case you didn't have an idea what uh, Disneyland, how it's going to look for Disneyland. Visitors will enter Galaxy's Edge through one of three entrances near the park's Fantasyland, Frontierland, and Critter Country themed areas, with the expansion turning what are now dead ends into a circuitous, I can say it, circuitous route. Uh, short and close passageways between lands are designed to compress and then expand the view of visitors like much like a movie fading out and then back in to ensure your first sight of Galaxy's Edge is a carefully framed cinematic view that is so Disney to do that. So you're so going to go sweet. out and you're going to fade out from, say, Fantasyland, right. okay, you're gonna, and then whoa, it's going to open up to this brand new Star Wars nice. world. So cool. <laughs> Uh, The land brings to life Black Spire Outpost on Planet Batu, near the outer limits of the Star Wars universe. It is mentioned in passing in the 2018 film Solo, A Star Wars Story, and featured more prominently in a 2018 novel from the Star Wars canon, Thrawn Alliances. But it won't be familiar to casual fans. Uh, by the way, I love that they're adding in. That just shows how Star Wars and Disney and everything are doing and building backstories. That they're adding this right. land, Batu <laughs> and Black Spire Outpost, into movies and books right. that are canon. Sure. You know? So that just tells you that this area is going to be canon in many ways. Uh, this is by design giving visitors a way into the storytelling regardless of their experience with the films. For inspiration for Black Spire, Disney's Imagineers visited Morocco and Istanbul and focused on small details. 
Local guides who wanted to show off iconic sites would find the Disney team instead taking pictures of, say, a door coming off its hinges, we were told. <laughs> Building exteriors in Galaxy's Edge are designed to look weathered from the first day of completion. Visitors who have seen uh, Harambe Market in the Africa section of Disney World's Animal Kingdom near Orlando, Florida. Yes, we know. Uh, sorry, I was reading from the story. We'll find a similar attention to detail here, such as the way the faint rush uh, faint rust streaks flow down from the corners of metal. Great. It, you see, it sounds like they're already getting a good look of what's going on yeah. there. I don't know if this is from uh, some of the pictures, the, you know, the, the uh, images, the, the, the artwork that they've done, but it sounds like they had a really good look at a lot of this stuff. Yeah, how exciting, there. Yeah, huh? so it's, yeah, it's so exciting. <laughs> I know. Uh, here's an interesting note that came out of the story. Galaxy, it says here, Galaxy's Edge will open in Disneyland this summer, perhaps by early June. How does this story wow. know that? Somebody must have told them that. And we're actually, it's been somewhat confirmed by Bob Iger in a very controversial interview recently. I'm not going to get into that because we're a positive podcast here, but a very controversial. <laughs> um, but part of it was that he confirmed that, yes, we're looking at June. I don't know what early June means, mm. but early June. Uh, for, Good thing I made those hotel reservations for late June. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping for uh, the <laughs> I'm actually hoping for soft openings in May because they're going to be opening in early June. Yeah, I'm hoping for true. some soft openings ahead of that that we might be able to find a way into. So here's some details about the attractions. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. In this attraction, Hondo Unaka, a pirate who we know very well, is one of my favorite characters yes. from both uh, Star Wars Rebels and, of course, the, the Clone Wars. Uh he has cut a deal with Chewbacca to use for use of the Millennium Falcon, and the visitor is the pilot. We already knew that. The attraction entrance will be subtly marked so as not to disrupt the look of the land. The ship interior will be familiar to even casual fans of the films, down to the 3D chessboard where Chewie lost his temper oh, during a match man. with R2-D2. Oh, cool is yeah, that? That's exciting. <laughs> it is. Uh, visitors will fly the ship in groups of six. We already knew that and see uh, the real-time results of their actions, such as knocking over a spire during takeoff. <laughs> the flight will be different each visit. After a ride, the visitor might say, stop by Oga's, Oga's Cantina, for a drink and be told something like, hey, the boss isn't happy about how you brought the ship back. <laughs> this is part of an interactive story-building experience throughout the land that visitors can opt in or opt out of. So you can, oh. if you don't want, you know, them to, you want, if you Harass want to, you. you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if you don't want to, uh, you know, like you know, Disney to know everything about what you're doing there, um, you know, you can kind of opt out of right. that part of it. So that's good. As for the rise of the resistance, visitors waiting in line for this attraction will wind through highly themed interiors that evoke rundown rooms the resistance has repurposed as a base for operations against the First Order. Groups of guests might be captured at one point and ordered along by the enemy before making their escape aboard a trackless troop transport. They will see scenes including a stormtrooper formation, one featuring Kylo Ren, perhaps resembling the interrogation scene from Star Wars The Force Awakens. Ooh. The transport will evade familiar war machines like the four-legged AT-AT <laughs> walkers. Got that right this Yay. time. AT-AT <laughs> walkers. Up close, these towering metal beasts do not disappoint. We've seen pictures of the framing of them when they were first building it, and they look like, wow, look at that. Those I look know. like AT-AT walkers. Now we're going to see this in this attraction. Yeah. Well, and in the, um, the I wanted to call it trailer, but the little video. Yeah, the little behind the scenes that we were. On Christmas Day. Right. The show. Scene kind of showed that too. And that really looked cool. Yeah. So. Interesting stuff. So moving on, Oga, I'm getting really detailed because there was really cool stuff in this. That's why I'm going through this whole story because it's really cool stuff. Oga's Cantina will be the first public restaurant in Disneyland to serve alcohol. We knew that. Oga's is relatively small for aesthetic reason and likely to be popular, so maybe tough to get into. Yeah. We'll see about that. To maximize capacity and keep visits from becoming all afternoon affairs, most guests will stand. There will be a handful of booths with seating around the outer edge of the restaurant. Good luck getting those, Yeah. Um, by the way. Uh, no decision has been made yet whether or how these can be reserved, but I'm sure they will figure out a way to do that. Right. Uh, an intricate tangle of tubes and vessels behind the bar might make some drinks appear to flow from the ceiling. Oh, wow. We heard a mention of a fuzzy tauntaun <laughs> named after the furry uh, snow lizard. Snow lizard? 
are they snow lizards? I guess you can call them snow lizards. I don't know. Whatever. That's what they're calling them. Uh, From Empire Strikes Back. Although it's unclear if that's a hypothetical drink or a planned one, and the menu is still being decided upon. So we'll see. Other retailers. The first time we've really heard a lot about some of the other shops there. One shop will feature droids that visitors can customize through an interactive experience. A droid that is made to be, say, afraid of stormtroopers might signal its fear whenever one comes close. (laughs) Droids owned by members of the same group might recognize each other when they meet. Prices have not been set uh, as of yet. The shop might also sell a full-sized R2-D2 for well-heeled fans, perhaps costing thousands. (laughs) I would think so. Yes. Uh, Another interesting thing is there will be another shop presided over by Dok Ondar. Dok Ondar, I think that's how he pronounced his name. A collector who is briefly mentioned in Solo. This character, uh, likely animat- uh, audio animatronic, will be set apart in a booth from the rest of the staff. Cast members might interact with Dokondar, uh, asking him what he's willing to let certain items go for. So you Ooh. might be able to do a little bartering right. there. Nice. Uh, elsewhere, there will be an outdoor market resembling a bazaar. A pod racing engine, perhaps at the market, will be used to roast meat. So you can have pod race <laughs> roasted meat while you're there. Okay. You know? Uh, it all Yum. sounds fascinating. They're, they, I think it sounds delicious. I know. I'm not touching uh, yum. yum. Um, there was a lot more details. I just got went through the main things that I thought were most important. The story goes on a little bit more there. Um, if you want to go check it out, it's on Barron's. Also, uh, WW News Today did a, a write-up of it and gave some of the details there as well. Uh, but it, really cool stuff. And obviously, they had some insight into what's going on there and more than we've heard to this yeah. point. So it's exciting. It is exciting. And the fact that they're looking at June, you know, because when they said summer, it's like, well, do they mean you know, the beginning of the summer or yeah. just before fall. So our trip is uh, out to Walt Disney World Resort is in early June. So I'm hoping we have some soft openings or they open it very early June so we can get to it right. uh, before that trip. But if not, we'll definitely hit it up afterwards. And yes, we have some uh, reservations out there to be able to sure and hit it up in later June yes. one way or the other. Right, so right. I'm excited about all of that. So. Uh, a little more Star Wars news for you, because after all, we are the Disney podcast that uh, desperately wants to be a Star Wars podcast, <laughs> as you can't, you could tell by my uh, long story on Galaxy's Edge there. Um, just a couple quick notes here. The upcoming Star Wars live action series featuring Cassie and Andor, which we're both excited about, mm-hmm. especially you. Yes. Uh, that is going to begin production in October of 2019. So it looks like that one won't be coming to you, at least if it, if it does come to us in 2019, it's probably very late in the yeah. year. Uh, so we'll just kind of wait and see on that. As for season seven of the Clone Wars, however, it's been confirmed for late 2019 release. No specific date, but a late 2019 release. I would bet that that's probably right about the time that they will have Started. Disney Plus mm-hmm. going to do Disney streaming service sure. and have that ready for you, right to go and want as people are purchasing in. Uh, you know, right, right. That to would have make that. sense. So. That would make sense to have that available and to be able to say, okay, coming soon. Yes. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. So those are our Disney stories of the week. As always, we never wrap up a show without giving you our vacation tips, uh, some sort of tip to help you, whether you're going to the parks, whether you're going to Disney Cruise Line, run Disney, whatever it may be. We like to leave off every episode with a little tip to kind of help you along the way. And we always start it with Michelle, one, because it's always ladies first, and two, because her tips are wonderful, fantastic, the best tips. <laughs> and so before you tune away, we want to make sure you get Michelle's tip and so let's get to it here's Michelle's tip of the week and you're so wonderful I didn't even pay you to say that that's so great so uh, because we were talking about Disney Cruise Line and in our experience of our vow renewal I figured I'd give a tip related to uh, Disney Cruise Line and um, one of them is well, it's actually a two-parter so the first one is that if you are considering booking a Disney Cruise you might want to look at some of their special themed Disney cruises, like their Marvel. Blah, blah, blah. Take Easy two. for you to say. Take two. This is uh, a good one. Take five. <laughs> you are so going to pay for that. This is take two. <laughs> uh, Marvel Day, Star Wars Day, Halloween on the high seas, or very merry time. You know, um, and also if you're a Disney Vacation Club member, they have Disney Vacation 
uh, member-only cruises. So those are always wonderful because they have the extra special themed activities and guest speakers and things like that. But my real tip here is um, you may want to participate in what's called fish extenders. And that is not necessarily Disney coordinated, but there's a lot of sites out there. All you have to do is Google fish extenders on Disney Cruise Line. And it's a fun way, especially for families who have kids uh, or little kids, because it really is a fun, interactive, daily thing that... um, that you can be involved with. And there's, you know, it, not to go into too much details, but, it, you, you know, you pre plan by bringing some very inexpensive little treats or treasures that you are, uh, are able to give out to other people who are participating mm-hmm. in this. And on the same sense, uh, your kids and your family can get some some cute little su- fun surprises. So, um, you know, it's not something that the, the expectation is for people to spend a lot of money on, but just a little something extra for the kids to look forward to. Too. And I know when we went on our cruise line on Disney Cruise Line um, with with um, our daughter and grandkids, then uh, they did this and they all had such a great time. And so it 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 helps create the magic before the cruise because you're getting things ready mm-hmm. for this. And then while you're on the cruise, it's just a little something extra to have. And again, the, the intent is not to ha- to do a lot of spending of money, but just to have you know, some enhancement to the fun. Yeah, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can either just go on board and just plan and put out your own fish extender or people will find you or you can find them. You can also right. find like Facebook groups and some other things there where the people are will, are, will be aboard your ship right. and so they can kind of know that you're going to be there and you know that they're going to be there and you can kind of plan that ahead. Right, and you can kind of get the, the list of the cabins and things like that right. of people who are participating. So that's my tip for this week. It's just, you know, how to get a little bit more out of a Disney cruise. Yeah, it's good. Those are good stuff. Great stuff. As I said, Michelle always has the best mm. tips. Now on to my lowly little tiny <laughs> tip of the week. My little tiny tip. Uh, this week coming up is the Walt Disney World Race Weekend. And congratulations to all of you. If you're listening to this Yay. after you've finished, congratulations for finishing. If you're just leading up to this week, we're so excited for you. Go out there. Have a great time. But I just want to go over, and this is a tip, a couple tips that I've brought up actually in our uh 10 Run Disney Race Day Commandments episode, which you could find if you want to you know, listen to back to some things we talked about to get you set for race day. Well, we've got some things in an episode that we had previously, but this is a couple tips that I want to go over real quickly. Again, just to kind of uh, get you set for race weekend, especially if you've never done it before. Um, first of all, uh, hydrate. <laughs> <laughs> I know that won't Never shock Michelle to tell you that you wow. should hydrate, <laughs> hydrate before, hydrate during, and hydrate after your race. Believe me, it's going to help you in so many ways. Please hydrate, and that goes for any time you're visiting the parks or in life in general. Just hydrate. Um, secondly, I just want to give you a tip for when you're on the course. Uh, there's a lot of people on these courses. Um, it was thousands and thousands. Probably the biggest race you'll ever take a part of, if if you've been in many races. You know. Uh, and there are a lot of times you go through narrow areas. So when you're out there, just be conscious of everybody around you. Um, you know, uh, try, if you're running in a group, try and run no more than two next to each other. You know, you can still have other people behind you. You can still hold conversations and you can shift who you're talking with about, but try not to take up too much space because it's tough at some points to get around if you're moving slower than somebody else. And believe me, you're always, there's always somebody faster than you. Unless you're an Olympic champion, there's always somebody running faster than you out there on that course. So just be aware of that. Be aware of who's in front of you. Be aware of who's behind you. If you're on some of the longer races, or even if this is a lot of a 5K is a long race for you, uh, you probably will walk at some point. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with walking when you're on the course. And it's, it's actually a very good thing to do to preserve your energy. So you can have a good time or you're going to want to take pictures or whatever. You want to stop for whatever. One thing you do is if you know you're going to slow down and stop to walk or, you know, slow down significantly in general, just hold up your arm and just kind of, just kind of wave the person behind you to know that you're slowing down so they don't run up the back of you, you know, and you don't want anybody to get injured. So just a couple of things out there when you're on the course, just be aware of your surroundings, be aware of all the people around you because you don't want to get yourself hurt, get anybody else hurt. You just want to go out there and have a good time while you're out there on the course. Right, right. And, you know, like you said, there's always people who can run faster than you and that being said, there's always going to be somebody mm-hmm. behind you, you know, and you may see something that you might want to take a picture of and, you know, you you stopping in your tracks to, 
you know, plant and take a picture, you may actually be collided into by somebody behind you because they're not expecting you to do that. So like you said, that's a great tip, you know, having that, you know, the putting your hand up and just realize that sometimes you might not be able to take that immediate picture. And if there's something you do want to take a picture of and you need to move to the side and, and hold off or go back a little, but just remember there are people behind you that mm-hmm. don't know what to expect from what your plans are. And by the way, I would say that to anybody who's just walking in the yeah, park on a regular know, day, because we see you so many true. people, especially with strollers and whatever, just oblivious to <laughs> other people around them. You know, take a look. If, if you're going to turn or you know, stop in the middle of Main Street, right. USA, just take a peek behind you and see if there's somebody following right behind you just to kind of, you know, get an idea. Just pay attention to your surroundings. So that's my tip of the Good week. Tip. And that's our show for this week. Uh, we are just about to go on vacation. I'm so excited. We're just, as of this taping, just a few days away from leaving. Uh, we will be discussing that uh, later on in a future episode. Next week, though, we will be continuing, as I talked about at the beginning, just because we're going on vacation and won't be here to record next week, we will actually be putting out new episodes in the weeks coming up. Next You're week, welcome. We'll- yes. <laughs> You're like, God, will you just take a break already and go away for a couple of weeks, please? Uh, next week, we'll be continuing to tying the knot, uh, tying the knot with Disney series with a great guest who will share his experience getting married at the Walt Disney World Resort. Yeah. We'll hear the story of how he and his wife met, their engagement, and details about the planning led up to their big day. And also share about some of the experience that might help you uh, if you're thinking about having your wedding or maybe you have some family members that are thinking about getting married at the most magical place on earth. Or vow renewal. Or vow renewal or yeah. any any uh, celebration sure. you may be wanting to do there. Uh, they're willing to help you out. So we'll be going over that. And, and I know it's going to be a, a great interview with this guest. And we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Absolutely. So uh, that's it for this week. Uh, please, uh, you follow us. Uh, we Even when we're on vacation, because we can't stay off our phones completely, <laughs> we will be on social media. And you can follow us on social media at Twitter, at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook and Instagram, at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. And you can also email us. I know we'll get email over. Well, some of the vacation we will. You can email us at Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. Right. And if you don't get a quick response from email just understand that we are going to be in some places that won't have great internet or internet and so um don't think we're ignoring you just know we're sipping a cocktail with an umbrella in it somewhere by a pool and, exactly yeah, but we'll get to you as soon as we can <laughs> brag 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 we brag yeah uh, if you found us today, please find us in the future at 1057max.com or the Max Plus tab and on the Max FM app. And you can also subscribe to it. It's really the best way to get all our episodes is if you subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. And please, if you have a moment, one, tell your friends about us. Tell your family about us. And even better, yeah, please, if you have just a second, give us a quick rating. And even if you have a little more time, uh, give us a review. It really will help others like you find our podcast if you think the people might want to listen to us. Right. And remember, again, we've changed our name slightly. We've extended it. Sort of. <laughs> We're still the Hyperion Adventures podcast. And that's what you'll still hear us say. But we are now technically the Hyperion Adventures podcast. A, uh, excuse me. I can't even get the name right. Take yes. 15. Yes. Take 135. <laughs> Hyperion Adventures Podcast, Everything Disney for Everything is what our full name is. Yeah. Because like, our name wasn't long enough already. <laughs> this is make it more complex. Right. <laughs> oh, why do we do this to Happy ourselves? Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for listening to Hyperion Adventures Podcast, Everything <laughs> Disney for Every Fan. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week, even though we won't be here. Our time will still be with you next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.